Hey guys, Juan here. Thanks for dropping by my channel and checking out this video. So occasionally I will upload videos that encourage and inspire others and hopefully uh, change people's lives. That's the goal. And I went to a conference recently where I heard a speaker named Josh Ship, and he has a tremendous story. And so I'm going to uh, play this video of Josh Ship about his story and how he almost killed himself uh, with a bottle of pills. Um, I think it's going to be one of those stories that you'll remember and it's got a very good meaning that deals with marbles and how they represent each week in a child's life. So watch this video all the way to the end. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe for more content but yeah check out this great video on Josh Ship. I tried to kill myself with a bottle of pills and the fact of the matter is I trusted no one and looking back I guess how could I? From the time my parents left me, to the time another foster kid raped me, to the time I was bullied so bad, I genuinely could not fathom a world where I could trust anybody. So fast forward, here I am, 14 years old, and entering my umpteen foster home. I was a pro, a veteran at this whole sort of getting kicked out of one home, moved to the next. You meet these people who were like, literally complete and total strangers 10 minutes ago, who are now apparently your mom and dad. You know, kids don't take candy from strangers, just move in with them. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the van, in the driveway of this next home, and that's when I see Rodney. He's standing up there on the front porch, and immediately I notice, this is a large fella. <laughs> he's six foot five, he's 350 pounds, and as a 14-year-old boy, I couldn't help but notice, when he's turned to the side like that, He's shaped like a lowercase b. <laughs> it's amusing now, but in the moment it was tactical. Maybe that's how I could get kicked out of this home. Maybe I could get under his skin about his weight. So I move in with him. I'm being obnoxious, I'm being ungrateful, I'm being just downright rude and mean, I'm setting things on fire. And three years later, I can't shake this guy. <laughs> Rodney won't kick me out. So I step up my game. I go to the local bank in town. I open up a checking account. I put about 90 bucks in there. Then I proceed to write $10,000 worth of checks. Obviously checks bouncing one after the next after the next. One check that bounced was for my car insurance. I'm going down the road speeding Stillwater, Oklahoma, 88 miles an hour. No car insurance, no driver's license. I get pulled over, handcuffed, thrown in the back of a cop car and sent to jail. I call Rodney. I'm like, Rodney, I'm in Stillwater, I'm in jail, I'll tell you the whole thing when you get here. Can you please come bail me out tonight? He said, I will come bail you out, but not till tomorrow. Rodney frustratingly believed sometimes one of the most loving things you could do for a kid was allow them to sit in either the success of their wonderful choice or the stupidity of their foolish choice. Next morning, he comes, bells me out, exactly as promised. We have a long, very awkward car ride home. No one says anything. We get back to the house. He's like, we need to sit down and talk. And I knew this moment had finally come. So Rodney, his wife, sit me down to give me the talk I've had a dozen times. He looks in my eyes and says, son, you can keep causing problems. You can keep trying to mess up. You can keep pushing us away. You can keep trying to get us to kick you out of here, but you've got to
Right here, we are looking at time. In fact, you're looking at all the time or all of the weeks you have left to influence this kid, this kid, or this kid before they turn 18 and begin making critical life decisions without your presence. The difference between a statistic and a success story is you.